tequila is a village that started tequila and the, and the spirit is named after that. And it's like Shangri-La. It's one of the coolest places in the world. It's simple. I have a case. It's filled with hundreds of postcards. On the back of each postcard, I've written topics. We pull these cards at random and then we talk. I have my native tattoo right here, what my, do you have? my tribal tattoo. It's just my 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 uh, my my desert native tattoo. That's the Arizona flag part up there. It's part partly. Yeah, this yeah. was done interestingly enough um, to me. Interestingly enough, by a, a guy who's a friend of mine. He's a pat. He's half Apache and half Mexican. Yeah. And he's an artist. And the Apache and the Mexican is an Arizona native. You know, we're bitter, bitter, bitter enemies. And yet he is this confluence of that and he's a very he's a peacemaker he's a very very cool dude he's yeah. a visual artist a painter and a sculptor anyway this is based on a Hopi motif that I got done by an Apache Mexican dude on an Arizona white guy it has yet to emerge as its own culture um, that that is that is recognized by the other states I mean I know what Arizona culture is you know I right. feel it I live it it's this it's this mix of mythology legend um, Many many cultures essentially first colliding in the same place and then having to to coalesce and and here we have this civilization that has all these wonderful Aspects you know cultural aspects there's mariachi stuff and Mexican food and then there's you know weird tourism in Sedona uh, And the Sonoran Desert which is the only desert in the, in the world uh, in the United States that has a saguaro cactus right. You know and I love that that for lack of a better word is a point of pride for me You know and the saguaro is iconic I think it's such a unique state, and when I see the flag, I don't know, it, I, it wells me up for some reason. <clears throat> we got a cool flag. We, we, a, we have the coolest flag, <laughs> only possibly trumped, and I hate to say this, don't kill me, this is New Mexico. It's pretty cool. The Zia yeah. on there is a pretty cool it's flag. It's so basic. Agreed. Yeah, it's basic, it's elegant. It's really nice. I dig, I dig our flag, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in with the Arizona It's 1-2 cool. or 2-1. It's the same. It, for, for you. For me, it's 1 Arizona, 2 New Mexico. <laughs> I started working for my father when I was um, really too young to have a job, but he had a, a landscaping company in Arizona, so I'd work summers with him, and he'd pay me 25 cents an hour. I was a kid kid, you know, more like it was his way of babysitting me and my, and my son when we were visiting him, and we'd water lawns and we'd eat and stuff. That, those were long, hot days, and at the end of a week I'd have six bucks, you know, and it was great. Um, he taught me how to work long, hard, not complain. Um, I ended up getting, my first job in high school was as a busboy in a place called uh, Dale Anderson's Other Place off the freeway. And, you know, I did what busboys do and you, you screw around, you try not to get caught not working, you know, and you try to be seen working, we had just very, very infrequently. Um, hardest job I ever had was in college. Uh, I was looking for a summer job and I had a friend who owned a, uh, a company that was making basements. They were doing excavations and pouring the forms around uh, around the holes to keep them from caving in. In Arizona? Mm -hmm. In Arizona. Which there, at the time, there wasn't a lot of basements. And still aren't, still aren't nearly enough. And um, it would be an energy efficient, a, a really good idea to have a right. basement in Arizona. However, um, I got the job of having to take a, a measuring stick and a jackhammer and walk between the outside of the excavation and the wall. And if, it was, if that stick wouldn't fit, I had to drive a truck up, jump down in there with a jackhammer, hold this thing and blast out the clearance, the tolerances, all the way around these things. And it was the hardest work I ever did. I did not last very long doing that. Um, the jackhammer was hot, probably weighed as much as I did. <clears throat> the hearing protection was minimal. The eye protection was always getting chipped up and it was, it was terrible. So I made that, I only made that job happen about two weeks. So that right. was the hardest work I've ever done. Did you ever get heat stroke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did as a kid. Um, and then I learned to recognize what it is before it, it happens. The you know? shaking and all that? Yeah, yeah, the shaking, yeah. the chills. And actually I did one time on a hike when I was by myself and I didn't have the option to stop. I was, I was cruising across the desert um, in, imprudently in June when I thought that there would be a wave of uh, Chubascos and give me shade and water. And there were, there were two days where I didn't have any shade and very little water and uh, I had to sit down under the, under the scrubbiest of creosotes and, and just try to shake out um, that heat stroke, the, the chills and almost hallucinations, and then there's, there's a lot of stuff that comes along with it. And I was happy when in the morning I woke up and I was, I was a, a, able to travel, because I was by myself. And the Could desert's not forgiving, because at night it gets cold. Too. It gets ridiculously it cold. It doesn't retain any heat. No, 
It's, no. People don't realize that. Yeah. If you need it, you can find a, a big stone and lay down on it, but largely you don't want to. You want to lose that solar gain that you've gained all day. Something else people from, who aren't from Arizona won't appreciate is you just said the creosote bushes. Oh, yeah. What's special about the creosote bushes? I love, that it, I love the smell of the creosote bush. And After a rain? Or before the rain. It's, it's rumored, and I don't have any, any botanical expertise to, to, clear, or to uh, confirm this, but it's rumored that they feel the change in the barometer and know when the uh, the rains are coming so they yeah. open up and that very very unique smell comes out of their pores and it, that's when they're they're receptive they become receptive to gaining more water before it comes and so that's what that smell is. it has a spanish uh there's like a spanish name for it they call it the little stinker no really i don't know what how, that, that. how awesome. that translates but i think that's my son <laughs> stinker. Bring how many up. how many kids do you have now i have three you have three yeah and he's a little stinker how, how are their awesome. ages they are i have twins my, my youngest are a boy and a girl yeah and they are 16 now and my oldest is a boy and he's 19. Oh, so they're in high school or past high school, yeah. Arizona State for the oldest and going to be senior year in high school for my two youngest. When the hell did all that happen, right? It's like that. You know, time flies. Yeah. And especially when you're having fun. You know, my daughter asked if she could take uh, my guitar on spring break down to Mexico. And I said, yeah, of course. You know, totally. So she'll, she's down there and hopefully she's strumming the chords, the charts that I wrote out for her. You know. Are they in Rocky Point? They are. They're in Rocky Point. That's Arizona's beach, by the way. It People is. don't think Arizona has ocean. <laughs> but it does. It, it just happens does. to. It just it's, happens to be in Mexico. Yeah, it happens to be 60 miles south. Okay, well, I was just doing uh, a little bit of math, which is giving me a headache. But your son is 19, and fizzy, fuzzy, big and buzzy. 20. 20. So yeah. the year before he was born is when that album came yeah, out. Yeah, my first album is older than my my oldest my eldest son. And that's what we're kind of celebrating right now. Is that yeah, album. we're back. I'm back at Smith's Old Bar, and I know I've been coming here for a decade, uh, at least. Um, to play, I'm, I've come and been given the stage. I get to play Fizzy Fuzzy, Big and Buzzy, track by track, top to bottom in its entirety, and basically tell stories that I remember or think I remember about the inception and conception of those, those tunes. And people have been really, really cool. Houses have been filling up and people are yelling back lyrics and it's been a ton of fun. If I had to guess, I think it's Mekong. Yeah. I think Mekong is likely the most requested. Or if when the Peacemakers are on tour, we try not, if, if we decide we're going to give it a break on a set list, nobody, nobody lets us get off the stage. Right. You know, like, no, be gone, get back here. That's 20 years, though, since that Refreshments album came out. I mean, that was a game changer for you, wasn't it? What, yeah. How it did, set, what, what changed in your life when that set album the came stage. out? Everything. Um, you know, I went, well, I went from being a, a college musician or somebody touring regionally to somebody who went, who had, had help in the form, and it sounds, it sounds like an oxymoron now, but it, we, we really had a lot of assistance in the form of our record company. So getting out of Tempe, Arizona was facilitated by that enterprise, by Mercury. They really helped us in tandem with a booking agent and a manager, but we didn't have an adversarial relationship with Mercury. So our touring was fun, easy, and little by little, it wasn't an overnight success, but it was successful. We went back to a traditional Mexican tequila. There's, a, there's an old story. It's kind of legend now, but it's based in fact that in about 1942, 41 or 42, when the United States entered World War II, we couldn't import tequila from, I'm sorry, not tequila, we couldn't import liquor like we used to be able to before the war because of the sub hazard. So the United States having a penchant and an appetite for alcohol started importing more from Canada and from Mexico. Now our appetite for tequila outstripped their supply and Mexico in a very entrepreneurial capitalistic fashion started to dilute it. Anyway, it became less quality. It, it became, it went from being their estate tabletop family pass around sit and sip tequila to a shoot salt lime mix it kind of liquor. Somehow which make what it palatable. In, right, yeah. which is what we inherited. But tequila was originally very, very elegant and it's still a point of pride with Mexico. So we found a distillery who has that ethos and makes that and only that. I have Mexican friends here in Atlanta that turned me on to mezcal. Yeah, I'm a fan. Now that's good stuff. When uh -huh. is that going to catch on? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it will happen in, in the United States culture in our lifetime. There's still a big tequila education going on right. on this side of the border. Mezcal is um, largely seen as a sort of an inferior, a dirtier, a less refined <laughs> spirit. It's not. It can be equally as elegant as tequila. And it, it, I don't think it suffers from this, but it, it certainly tastes more earthy, more smoky, smoky, closer to the terroir of wherever it's, it's distilled. 
and I factually love it. But then again, I grew up on Bacanora in southern Arizona, which is another sort of cousin. It's a subspecies of this whole right. thing that we, we know as, but not as entirely tequila. Anyway, so I grew up on Bacanora, which was largely given to my family by Mexican caballeros who would come up and help us herd cattle in the summertime. And that's where I was introduced to Bacanora and tequila was when I was a kid, you know, 12 yeah. years old, got to sneak a little bit of tequila behind the barn while we were tying up the horses, you know. I don't tell anybody how they should or shouldn't have their liquor, especially tequila. Um, however you like it, it's the way you should do it. But I like mine room temperature, no salt, no lime meat. That's how I prefer it. Yeah, I can't bring myself to do the lick slam suck. Thing. No, I've done plenty of that. And that's basically a self-defense mechanism, you know, <laughs> against like really right. poor grade tequila. Yeah, and then at some point I, I got income in my life and I was like, well, I don't need you to did? buy I know, I don't need to Bravo. get something from a squeezable plastic bottle. No, it doesn't need to you know, be. Not much income, mind you, but enough that I could get something that's in a glass bottle now. Good call. And that isn't terrible. Good. And you're like, oh, this is actually pretty good. I should just drink this. That's good. <laughs> yeah, spend, that, spend your money on that. It's not a luxury. It's, a, it's um, if, if you taste the good stuff, like Mexican moonshine, and then you go back to what you were, you realize, like, I was crazy for not just spending the extra little bit of money on this really good stuff. It was college. Like, I didn't have money in college. It was, no. You needed That's when you could make 13 bucks go a whole weekend. That's right. We had a place called Tenley Liquor, and uh, it was in Washington, D.C., and they, they, you would buy the Tenley brand of whatever it was, and it was the squeezable plastic bottle, and so many bad decisions. I have a headache, yeah, thinking yeah. about that. When was the last time you had to throw down with like somebody. fisticuffs? Yeah. It's going to ruin my rep, but uh, it was probably high school. Yeah? No, it was probably high school, and I don't even think we exchanged punches. I think we squared off, and, and uh, I was really, a, I was a skinny kid in high school, and um, I transferred from, from you, you would probably know, Brophy, Brophy sure. Prep, to McClintock High. Okay. So my first two years were at a, a, a college, or I'm sorry, a, a Catholic school, really educationally intensive. And then I moved to a public high school because it was driving me crazy to go to that other school and there were no girls. Anyways, um, <laughs> when I showed up as a junior in McClintock, I, I caught, a lot of, caught a lot of flack for being the new guy. And, uh, and for being from Brophy? And for being from Brophy. So I had to bluff my way out of a situation or two, but I did, I did well at not yeah. flinching. And uh, I didn't have to throw down. So last fight, can I tell dirty stories? Of course, All you right. can say well, it, was, it was. It was actually with my brother. And it didn't even, it doesn't even, it was in high school, and it doesn't even really qualify as much of a, as much of a fight. It was um, in high school, I was probably a senior, and he was a sophomore, and we snuck back, we snuck out of the house, and then snuck back in, and when I was sneaking back in, I went into our bathroom, he and I shared a bathroom, and he was standing there, taking a, you know, using, taking a whiz. Can I say all this? You can say anything you want, yeah. Anyway, so I was like, hey, it's the internet. I was like, hurry up. He turned at me, and he pissed on me, right? <laughs> He was hammered, and I think I was too, so I grabbed him, and I shoved him through the shower curtain, and as he went back, he did the full right. smash and knocked the bar down, and he, he was still whizzing all over himself and cursing at me, and of course, that blew our cover. You know, mom and dad were on to it. So my mom comes in, she goes, what is going on? That's as much as a fight as I got, with my, just to grab my brother and <laughs> shove him through the shower curtain because he pissed on me. That's about it. He didn't have a chance to throw back. Because mom, mom stopped the fight. Right. I'm sure he would have. I don't like to see fighting even at bars or anything like that. I think I've it kills seen, the buzz. I've seen know? enough of my friends actually throw down and then regret it so much yep. so soon after. Because one, you get hurt. The other guy gets injured. And usually 99% of the time it's about nothing. Nothing. It's really about nothing. And you could have let it go and everybody would have had a better time. What blows my mind is like on the internet, I'm, you see people fighting and it's on YouTube. And... I'm like, people are fighting on, on, in parking lots. I'm going, you know that's concrete. Yeah. You know yeah. what happens when one of you hits that? You, you get really hurt. Yeah, you get fucked up. It's, that's really a hurt. terrible idea. It's a very terrible idea. I really enjoy beer. <laughs> yeah? Who doesn't? Yeah, you know. What's your beer? Um, I like, I like kind of running the table on beer. There are so many good microbrews out there. My enjoyment of, of beer started at Four Peaks back in Tempe. Okay. So no, I know the owners of that place, and they, they brew freaking great beers, you know, and so... And I'm on their soccer team, so whenever we right. whenever we win, we get paid in beer. Other things, I'm a, almost a professional procrastinator. Yeah, like, I just like to fuck off, like and <laughs> and not do anything, and just let my mind run. And so, what does that look like? Are you sitting on the couch, or are you just are you trying? Are you playing around, your guitar? I, yeah, I do that, and I sit on the couch. But usually, it's non-constructive. It's moving moving something from here to there. Um, I don't know. Guilty pleasures. 
There's a show on Netflix that my kids turned me on to, and I yeah. think it's called New Girl. Okay. I'll sit and watch that thing and just, just giggle. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> totally uncool, but I dig it. <laughs> the characters are awesome.